bringing you key insights, tips, and advice from the brightest minds in the Canadian franchise industry. This is the Franchise Canada Chats Podcast. I'm Kirk from Reshift Media, your host for season 6.5 of the Franchise Canada Chat Podcast, where we take you into the world of franchising. Our interviews are with franchisees, franchisors, and industry leaders who give on the pulse expert advice and share their franchising insights and experiences. Hi everyone, uh, Kirk Allen here from Reshift Media and I'm with uh, Brian Woods of Neighborly. Uh, Brian is the Group Vice President of Franchise Development um, and we're here today to talk about franchise ownership uh, versus self-employment. Uh, just before we get into the questions, a little uh, background about Reshift Media. Uh, we're a digital marketing firm uh, located here in Canada. I've been longtime members of the uh, CFA and we do three main things. Uh, we build websites and apps, we do social media, and we do SEO and SEM for franchise systems in Canada, the US, and around the world. Uh, everything from uh, getting customers into your stores to uh, franchise development, driving leads to um, your brand. So enough about me. We're not here to talk about Reshift. We're here to talk about Neighborly. And um, it's great, Brian, that you're able to join us today. So. One of the first questions, and I think a lot of people have this, you know, what benefits does franchise ownership award versus self-employment? Yeah, well, I think it's a few things, to be honest, um, when it comes to franchising. And one of those is going to be a franchise system provides proven processes, right? And, you know, a lot of times when you're going into self-employment, you have to actually create and develop a lot of those, those models and those programs. But the good thing about franchising is that we actually have created those systems that's proven, right? We figured out what works and we also figured out what doesn't work. So um, being a part of a franchise network, that is definitely a benefit. Um, also, when you're working with the franchise, you're also working with a established brand, right? So there is some already inherent uh, brand awareness from customers uh, that you, know, you will already uh, take advantage of coming into a franchise brand. And then obviously, you know, we have um, marketing support and we also have a lot of operations support, a lot of coaching and mentoring to make sure that every person that comes into our franchise brand or into any franchise brand for that matter is set up for success. And there's also a financial benefit when you're working with a franchise or especially one of scale, uh, such as Neighborly, where you also get um, some purchasing power benefits, where a lot of the supplies, a lot of the tools or anything that you use for your business you can actually get better pricing when you're working with a large franchisor because since there are so many in the network, uh, you know, these franchisors have the ability to um, provide great pricing terms for their franchisees. So I think in a nutshell, those are probably the key benefits of, you know, going with a franchise versus going out on your own. Yeah, th those are all great points. So basically you're in business by yourself, but not by yourself. That's like, correct. You've got that support of you guys. And, uh, and I love the fact that you talk about, you've learned what not to do as well, right? That, so you, you're, you're actually, you know, you've, you've proven the concept and you're able to share that um, experience with the, the new uh, franchisee. Which is and that's probably one of the biggest benefits, right? Because a lot of times your biggest learnings are from failure, right? Or where things don't go wrong. So, yeah. um, you know, we've been in, you know, in business and franchising for over 40 years. So we've seen, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly. Right. Yeah. So we yeah. have had the opportunity to iron out those kinks and, and pretty much provide more of a fail safe model that really sets up our franchisees for success. Well, that's great. So 40 years of experience. Certainly uh, there's lots to share. Some good, bad and ugly. Right. So oh, yeah. uh, that's awesome. <laughs> um, so I'd imagine a lot of your franchisees are entrepreneurs or have been in a past life. Mm -hmm. So why is franchising a good choice for entrepreneurs? Well, it, it's really you know, into three key components, right? The first one is that, you know, they will have the ability to market a, a brand that is really familiar with customers, right? So that's one of the things, they have that, that platform. Um, another reason why, you know, it's a good choice is because it lowers their operational risks, right? Very similar to, you know, the uh, topic we were just discussing around having those proven systems. This entrepreneur can save a lot of time, effort and resources um, and, and actually just focus on the model that's already been created. And then also when it comes to franchise with these entrepreneurs, 
one of the biggest benefits is having the ability to network and learn from others in the franchise network who's done it longer than they have, who have a lot more experience to offer that coaching, that mentoring so that every entrepreneur starts off on the right foot. And they have that support system to help them with people who have been in their shoes, started where they started from and have already worked through those those challenges. Yeah, that networking piece is so key. And we work with lots of franchise systems. And so often we hear, you know, they buy a franchise or territory, um, Mm -hmm. open their doors and expect people just to flow in um, Mm -hmm. or the phone to ring or the forms to be completed. But the reality is you do need to network. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously you've got all these existing franchisees that can help uh, support them, but it's networking within their communities and getting to be known as as the brand uh, neighborly in the community. So the networking piece is so critical. I, I totally, totally agree with you. Yeah. And, and, then, and then neighborly, there is a couple of, you know, key criteria that we look at when we're, you know, identifying candidates to be franchisees in our network. You know, one is to have the ability to grow and lead a team, right? Because that's mm-hmm. one thing that an entrepreneur as a business owner has to do. They have to be able to develop, grow and develop their team. Um, they have to be able to, you know, follow a, a process in the system and they have to be able to manage to the numbers, right? Understand their budget, understand their key uh, goals uh, for the quarter or for the year, uh, because what we try to do is we want to make sure our entrepreneurs is working on the business and not in the business, right? And it's a big difference when you have an entrepreneur who has that mindset that they're going to work on the business, that strategic mind, that executive, to run all the the right components of the business to be successful. Yeah, develop it, develop the territory. Um, yes. But yeah, you're so right. Sometimes they get into the details too much, and then they're they're kind of in the business instead of growing the business. And that kind of limits their ability to grow, I'd imagine. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, the next one's a three part question here. So um, we're going to talk about, you know, what are the challenges of self-employment? Because there are, there's good and bad. Uh, what are mm-hmm. the challenges of franchising and you know, how can some of these challenges be overcome? But let's start about what are the challenges of self-employment in, in your, in, in your view? Well, I think one of the biggest challenges is that you will be competing most of the time with national established brands that already have an established customer following, customer loyalty, right? So if you're going into a business that has that uh, competitive landscape, you're going to be going with people who have been doing this for quite a long time. So I think that's one of the biggest challenges of finding your niche uh, as a self-employed business. Um, and then another one is just you know creating that model that works, right? So you know, the, we were talking about those proven successful models as you're as a self-employed business owner, you're going to have to create and, and figure out what works and, and, when, and most importantly, what doesn't work on your own. And that can be very expensive. That can be very time consuming. Right. But you have to figure that out so you can determine what's the right model that will pretty much deliver optimal profitability. So you have to have that time, that effort and that financial resource to get that done. Um, and then also trying to find the right um you know, talent to help you with from a marketing perspective, from an operations perspective, from a technology perspective, you know, because depending on the background of that uh, self-employed owner, um, they may not have the skills and the experience in all three of those facets to be very successful. So how do you find the right uh, resource to help you from a marketing, from an operations perspective, and then more importantly, technology? And then also, if you're not in a network and you're self-employed, who's going to be your mentor, right? Who's going to help guide you when things aren't going well, right? You know, or does that even exist? Because a lot of times, because of that competitive nature, many people don't really feel comfortable sharing best practices and providing guidance because they feel that they may (laughs) give the secrets, you know, to the sauce, right? So, but everyone that's in business, they need that kind of guidance. And sometimes when you're self-employed, it's hard to find that network. Yeah, that's so true. It's so true. When getting finding that mentor, and then I, typically entrepreneurs have certain strengths and weaknesses. And I guess that's where you guys come in. Is you guys have the proven systems where you can say you need marketing, call these guys, or you need you know um, you know some finding the right uh, personality type. Here mm-hmm. are the ones that we know that work. Or maybe it's the mentor that says, "Hey, we've tried this type of person, and they seem to be great." Um, so yeah, that's uh, interesting points for sure, Brian. Yep. Um, and what about franchising? So, you know, being an entrepreneur is one thing, um, but there are challenges with franchising too. 
Mm-hmm. Um, there's always there's great stuff too. But what are some of the challenges and and how do how how do you guys uh, see those being overcome? The challenges with uh, franchising. Yeah, well, one of the challenges is trying to find the right franchise. <laughs> that's that's in the nutshell, right? Because there's a lot of franchisors, there's a lot of franchise brands out there. So trying to find the right franchise zor with the right brand that aligns with your core values, your goals, your objectives, right? Because every brand has its own identity, their own um, mission statement and vision statement. How do you find the right brand that's going to resonate and represent what you're trying to, to do, right? So that's very time consuming because it's a lot of uh, research and development and a lot of due diligence, right? To figure out what's the right brand. Um, but then some of the other you know, challenges is also that when you're with a franchise, there is going to be some limited flexibility to how you can run that business, right? So as a franchisee or franchise owner, you are responsible for that business, but we expect you to, you know, operate the business within some parameters around uh, key brand standards and requirements. So that may be something that some um, entrepreneurs may find, um, you know, difficult trying to operate within certain brand standards. Um, and then also sometimes is, is also just looking at what kinds of opportunities available to recruit, right? Recruit talent. So sometimes franchise owners come in and they may find problems trying to recruit and hire the right people. So those are some of the things that we've seen. But to your point, you know, a lot of good franchisors like Neighborly, we have found ways to overcome a lot of these different, um, these different challenges, right? So at least on the, the flexibility side, right? We, all of our brands normally have a franchise advisory council. So we like to take the opportunity to listen to our owners to see what they're saying, you know, see what they're experiencing, what are some of their pain points so that we are always aware and how we can potentially course correct and adjust so that we are still being um, a great partner to our franchisees. Um, you know, in regards to recruiting and retaining talented you know, team members uh, for Neighborly, right? We have a lot of technology and platforms that help identify and, and recruit great talent, right? We, we've been working on a couple of different um, programs that will you know, help train and develop um, you know, key talent so that they can hire and develop a pipeline for, for their team. So, um, you know, when it comes to, you know, the marketing and the support, a lot of franchisors, we keep dedicated teams, dedicated to marketing, dedicated to operations, you know, de- dedicated to t- technology to ensure that these owners are getting what they need. So there are some great um, solutions that we help overcome for, for the average franchise owner. Yeah, and, and off the top there, you mentioned, you know, Finding the right fit. So finding the right fit for you as an individual, what type? Is it a service-based uh, business? Is it a brick and mortar? Is it, you know, services are really popular these days, right? But is it the right fit for the individual? So I love the fact that you guys take that into consideration. It's not like someone who shows up um, and says, hey, I want a franchise. It's got to fit, right? Because mm-hmm. you, you want them to be successful. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I love that point. And then the point about following the system, you know, so often entrepreneurs, I think I know how to do it better, right? And meanwhile, you know, you guys have 40 years of experience, but you do give them that opportunity with the, um, you know, with the advisory council. Yep. You know, if you've got great ideas, get on the advisory council and we'll hear you out. And if it makes sense, guess what? We're going to implement something that you suggest, but don't try to be... The, the cowboy and do it on your own, follow the system. And I think that's always a challenge for entrepreneurs is trying to fit into that, um, that system that you've built. And, and obviously there's some flexibility, but it'll work better if you follow the system, right? So yeah. I take a really good point. Yeah, and, and, and a couple of things on that too, is like going back to what you were talking about the fit, right? You know, one of the things we want to make sure that our franchise owners um, are looking at is, the passion, right? Don't follow the money, follow the passion, because if you're passionate and committed to the business, the money will come, right? So we want to make sure that, you know, you're going into the, the business for the right reasons. So in Neighborly, we have a mutual evaluation process to ensure that we are bringing in the right owners with the right mindset to be successful. So, you know, being able to ensure that they are committed, they are dedicated and passionate about this field, that helps already in the prospect of them being successful. So, yeah, um, that's just one thing. Yeah, and I imagine then the people they hire, if they see the owner is passionate and mm-hmm. has that positive, you know, energy, 
um, that's going to be an important part too. So the recruitment's a challenge, but retaining uh, team mm-hmm. members is also probably as important as recruiting. Yeah, definitely. And, and you know, one of the things too is, to your point, following the system. And a lot of the times, a lot of our owners find out the hard way that if they follow the system, they'll be more successful. Because to your point, a lot of times they might have that mindset that I know how to do this better. And I've gone to many of our uh, franchise conventions and saw our franchisees of the year on stage accepting their award and their speeches. When I came in, I wasn't following the system like I was supposed to, and I wasn't seeing the results. But the day I started to follow it, you know, verbatim, you know, and really stay committed to the to the system, that's when I started to be very successful. So to hear those testimonies only further confirms that that's the way to go. Yeah. So you have an annual convention, it sounds like, where you celebrate success and, you know, top franchisees in certain categories and that sort of thing. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So now we've been talking a lot about franchising and entrepreneurs, Brian, but we haven't talked much about neighborly. Uh, we've talked yeah. a little bit about your systems and, you know, what you do and bring to the table. But, you know, what benefits does neighborly provide to franchisees that make it a good choice? For yeah, those? well, well, definitely. Well, neighborly, first off, is the largest um, home services franchisor, right? We have over franchi- 5,000 franchise locations uh, worldwide. We have 29 brands spread across nine countries. And really, all of those brands are going to focus on either maintaining the home, repairing the home, or enhancing the home. So we are really trying to establish ourselves as the marketplace for anything you need to have done to your home, kind of like the Costco, right, or the Amazon of of home services. So that's, you know, what we're trying to do. We're trying to own the home, which is what we like to call where we're trying to have as many Uh, of our concepts in one market to really dominate that market share when it comes to home services. So that's kind of neighborly as as a whole. Um, But all in all, neighborly, we are providing our franchisors with that, you know, 40 years of experience, right? That 40 years of experience, those brands that we have, um, you know, some like Mr. Ruder, which is our plumbing franchise, they have a lot of brand awareness, right? A lot of brand equity. So we're gonna provide our franchisees and our owners with brands that they can leverage, right? One of the things we like to hear from our franchise owners is that when they start their business with Neighborly, on day one, they feel like they've been a 40-year company right there, right? Because they are being associated with that kind of with that kind of uh, brand loyalty and brand history. Um, we also provide, you know, top-notch marketing support, right? We have over 120 marketing professionals that help our franchise owners, anything from digital. Um, you know, social media content, you know, local marketing, everything um, when it comes to to marketing and then the operations expertise, right? Every franchise owner has what we call a franchise business coach that helps coach, mentor, provide guidance on how to create their budget, how to run their business effectively, um, and also help them as they try to expand and grow their business as well. So, um, you know, we have over 10 10 million customers worldwide, so they get access to those customers because we can cross market with our franchise owners. So that's another key element because not only are you starting day one as a a brand that's been around for a while, you already start with a customer base, right? Of our neighborly owners to, or neighborly customers to go after and market to. So, um, and then we also at the end give those tools to help recruit, identify and retain um, talent in their their businesses. So do you have a lot of um, franchise owners that I guess they buy a territory and then they, they, they get a Mr. Router and they get like all the different brands. Like, mm-hmm. I guess that's the ideal, right? So then they, they're covering all the home to your point. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we, we, we try to do. It, it pretty much increases what we call the stickiness of a customer. So if you have one franchise concept, so if it's Mr. Router and it's plumbing, right? You can go over and, to a customer and provide plumbing services. But then you can also say, hey, do you ever have an issue with, with your appliances? I also have a Mr. Appliance franchise we can come over and, and fix your appliances or who cleans your home, right? Molly Maid is, a, is another brand that comes over. So all these different opportunities to touch that customer only increases that stickiness of that customer. And then it also helps the growth of those franchise owners trying to develop and build in their, their business with multiple concepts. That's a brilliant concept. I love it. Uh, you know, owning the home and whether it's, you know, get plumbing or whether it's your appliances or, you know, it's cleaning. It's I love it. I think it's a really smart, smart uh, uh, concept. And then you do need good operators, though. So 
Let's mm-hmm. talk a little bit about those entrepreneurs. Um, obviously, if you're going to manage multiple brands, and mm-hmm. I love the fact that you can, you know, you've got you know two million customers uh, in the world, and obviously in a market you're going to have thousands of customers, and you're able to cross market to them. That that that's key. But for them, they can't be in the business. They got to have people running the business. So so what are some of the qualities that are important? Um, for entrepreneurs looking to try a new venture, like they obviously they, they have to be a pretty good operator. They have to yeah. have that that passion. But what are some of the qualities that you, important qualities that you think are important? Yeah, I think the first one that comes to mind is a strong work ethic. Right, you have to be committed to roll your roll up, roll up your sleeves. You know, understand your business, understand what needs to be done, and be committed to doing anything possible to making sure you're successful. So, yeah. um, having that work ethic right off the top, and then being goal focused, right? Mm-hmm. Setting your goals so that you understand, you know, what do you need to accomplish by month end, right? By quarter end, right? What's my year end goals? Because the goals help keep you focused on the business and what you need to accomplish. So, being able to have those um, those goals set and following them is also really critical. Um, being financially qualified. So basically having the finances to be able to deploy uh, in your business wherever you need. So if there's increased investment in marketing or increased investment in your technology or operations teams, you have the ability to do that, right? And and, and put that investment into your business. So having the the financial uh, capabilities to build your business is also something key. And then, you know, and I mentioned earlier too, being able to apply and follow a system. Right. And being committed and disciplined, because I think there's a lot of times where the temptation of, you know, going out and doing it on your own or trying to find creative ways is always there. But, you know, sticking to the to the to the script and, and following what's already been done is really the key to, to being a successful entrepreneur, franchise owner, uh, especially at Neighborly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love the fact that you talked about goal setting, following the goals that work ethic. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur myself and work ethic, you know, like I, I'd love to go play golf every day, but I can't, <laughs> you know, um, you and I both. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so you got, you got to, you got to put in the time and effort. Um, it's not nine to five. And um, I, I think your comment around finance is an important one. I am, you know, obviously, you know, some people launch a brand, but then they don't have any dollars to market it. Mm-hmm. So you, you have this great territory, but now what? Like the mm-hmm. phone's not ringing. The forms aren't being completed, but you got to have dollars set aside for marketing to promote the fact that you're there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you make great. I love I love your answers. These are these are really great points, Brian. So last question. Um, so what factor should really be considered when deciding between franchise ownership or do it on my own self-employment? Right. And that's a really good question to ask. And I think the way I would start with doing the personal inventory of, you know, the entrepreneur's uh, skill set, right? Because in order to be successful in any business, you need to have some kind of experience and, and knowledge in sales and marketing um, and operations. So you want to make sure you, you understand, you know, your capabilities in those disciplines in order to determine whether you need to go into business for yourself or to franchise, right? Because with franchising, you don't have to be a professional in all those. You get that support from all those different disciplines to make sure that you're, you're going to be successful. So just understanding the amount of experience that you have in those. Um, also, just understanding how to create a, a business plan, right? You know, that's the biggest thing with self-employment, understanding the right levers to, to pull to create a feasible and a reachable you know, plan when it comes to your goals, right? Bre- understanding profitability, your break-even. Um, these are things that you get the assistance when you're working with a really good franchisor. But if you're in self-employed, you have to come up with that, right? So that should be considered. You know, how do you you break you create your model? Um, also, ability to have a network that you can leverage to either a attract talent uh, or b build your business, right? From a from a, a marketing perspective. And you mentioned earlier, right, by going out in the in the networking events and building your your network and understanding. When you're self-employed, you got to do that a whole lot more, right? Because you are the CEO, the CFO, the CMO, right? You're yeah. everyone, yeah. right? So um, whereas, you know, working with franchise models, you get that support and that assistance to help you grow and market and network. And, and I think those are probably some of the key 
you know, questions that should be considered, whether you want to go into franchising and leverage a model that's already been put in place and you're just going to plug in and be successful or, you know, being self-employed and kind of creating all these from scratch and, and probably take a little bit longer time as well as increase or investing more money to get to the same place. Yeah. And a good franchisor. So that's what you guys are. You're the franchisor. Yes. Um, and we see all sorts of different levels of commitment from franchisors. And from mm-hmm. what, from what I've heard and heard about you guys, you guys are, are really great in supporting the, the disease, the, the franchisees. So that, that's, that's so critical. Um, so often the franchisor sells a territory. Good luck. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I thought you were helping me. Um, but obviously you guys have great uh, support and system. And then that networking piece. Yeah. We did talk about it off the top, but man, you, you, you've got to get out there and network. You, you've got to build a business. You've got to be out going to the, you know, all the local events and getting involved and maybe sponsoring some stuff and get the name out there. Right. And yeah, because position yourself as a local business, which you are as a franchisee is you mm-hmm. are a local business owner and make sure you're positioning yourselves like that with the support of you as the uh, the franchisor. Yeah. And, and it's important for franchisors to, you know, at least for Neighborly, right, to, to be there and serve as a partner to our franchise owners. So when they get that territory and open up that business, we're not just going to leave them out, you know, there in the wild, you know, by themselves. We want to help them grow and be successful because when they win, we win, right? And, and, sure. and then with that, when you're providing that guidance and, and they're being successful, they're going to be great validators, right? They're going to go out there and sing the praises of Neighborly and our brands about the, the type of support uh, and service that they're getting to make others want to join the brand as well. Because if you're not helping your franchise owners, they're going to leave and then no one else is going to want to replace them because they're going to hear the different experiences that these owners have had. So it's really critical that you make your existing franchise network successful because it helps you build the future franchisees. That's awesome. Well, listen, we're, we're almost at the end here. Is there any closing comments you'd like to make, Brian? It's, it's been such a pleasure, but any closing comments you'd like to, and, and feel free to talk about, you know, Neighborly and uh, some of the brands if you'd like, because you guys are, you guys are killing it, man. Yeah. Well, no, nothing in particular, but I will just, you know, go a little bit more in, into my role here at Neighborly. Uh, I am the group vice president um, here at Neighborly. I actually cover our brands in our repair group, right? So when I was going over those three nine brands, they're broken down into three, you know, key components, repair, maintain, and enhance. So I am responsible for the repair brands. Um, within those brands, that's Mr. Rooter, which is the plumbing franchise, Mr. Appliance, which is appliance repair, uh, Mr. Electric, which is electrical repair, hmm. AirServe, which is our heating and cooling franchise, uh, Dryer Vent Wizard, which actually repairs and installs uh, dryer vents, and precision door, right? And that's a garage door uh, repair service. So that's kind of a third of our, of our portfolio and I'm responsible for that. And um, we also have, you know, other brands that, you know, cover other elements of the, of the, um, of the house. So please, you know, go out and check out Neighborly and all the brands that we have. But at the end of the day, I would just like to say for anyone who's looking to go into business, I applaud you because it's, you know, um, a very courageous thing. And, you know, we need more uh, business owners out there and to just do your, your you know, homework and see what model works for you. Do you think you can do this alone or do you feel like, you know, being with a franchise model uh, is beneficial for you? And if you feel that franchising is, is right for you, do that extra leg work and figure out what brands uh, would be good for you, right? What industry would be good for you? What are you interested in? And that will help guide your decision on where you want to land within franchising. Hopefully it's within Neighborly. Uh, because the uh, the housing market and the industry is really uh, popular right now, um, but but definitely you know take the time to do the homework and if you find that the benefits for franchising are greater than if you feel like you were doing it on your own, take the plunge, do your your homework and explore that franchise model and, and you should, hopefully you will be successful. And you've got so many options. So um, it's been a real pleasure, Brian. I, I really enjoyed our conversation. We're obviously both very passionate about franchising, so. On behalf of the Canadian Franchise Association, thank you um, and uh, good luck um, in all those brands that you're promoting. And uh, for anyone listening, go and check out Neighborly and um, there's a great opportunity amongst all their brands. So, so thanks. All right, thank you for having me. 
Thanks for listening. For more franchising resources, including how-to articles, expert advice, franchisee success stories, and franchise opportunity, visit FranchiseCanada.online. Don't forget to subscribe to Franchise Canada e-news while you're there. You can also learn more about CA and can connect with specific franchise opportunities at lookforfranchise.ca.